So I saw a question on Twitter recently that was someone saying that their track sounded really bad on SoundCloud and they wanted some insight into SoundCloud's compression algorithm and what exactly it was doing. So I can show you how I would figure this out. So first I would open Ableton and just throw operator or whatever synth you want on a track and generate a white noise wave. So in operator, you can just go to noise white, I guess. I've never actually used this thing, but um, yeah, anyway. Sounds pretty noisy, but let's just chuck a spectrum on there to see. All right, anyway, yeah, that's fine. So pretty much we just want something that has like a lot of frequency information. Um, so yeah, that's, that's our track pretty much that we're gonna use for testing. Um, we can go to export audio video. There used to be a setting here that said like upload to, to SoundCloud, but I guess it's, it's no longer here. That would have been really convenient for this exact purpose. All right, and now we're gonna go to SoundCloud. This is just kind of a throwaway demo account that I'm using, not my actual account. And then choose a file to upload. Again, we're gonna go to that file we just made. All right, so now we have our track uploaded and let's just make sure it is what we think it is. Oh, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Um, now we're gonna use this tool called YouTube DL. So uh, you can go to youtube-dl.org and then click on download instructions. It's a little bit technical, but just, just follow the instructions and it'll work. Uh, I have a program called Homebrew installed on macOS, which makes it really easy to install these kinds of applications. Um, and then we'll just open Terminal. And so I've already done brew install YouTube DL, but if you haven't, just make sure you do that first. And then we're going to run YouTube DL uh, and then put this URL. So this will take a second to download. And then voila, so what we have here is the uh, MP3 file that was actually generated by SoundCloud. So now what we can do is go back to Ableton and just, well, first let's put the rendered thing as like one audio track here. And then we'll make a new audio track and put the uh, white noise, whoops, sweet. And then you can delete that. Um, cool, so you can, uh, so the first thing you can do is actually just look at these tracks and see how the waveforms look different. Um, you can also do something fancier with ozone, I suppose, where we go to ozone eight, we chuck it on that channel. And then look at the spectrum. So we probably don't want all this stuff here. Cool, so that's what the SoundCloud spectrum looks like. And to compare that to the original spectrum, we can go to reference and then add that as a reference. Cool, so, so there you go. Um, this is actually really interesting because if you look at the high end here, you can see on the reference track, there's this bit that's just completely cut off in the final SoundCloud render. So if you're trying to um, mix a track, just know that this bit is completely gone. And yeah, you can see more clearly like on this view what, uh, what the frequency cutoff is. So yeah, there you have it, how to check a track that you've rendered out of Ableton versus what ultimately gets posted to SoundCloud. So let me know if this works for you or if you have any questions. That I actually made spectrograms of a WAV file versus the file that SoundCloud generated at 128 kilobits per second. So this is the original, as you can see, um, 
on the y-axis is frequency, on the x-axis is time. Blue means that there's like no amplitude at that frequency and yellow means very high amplitude. So if you compare these, you can see like pretty much everything above like 16 kilohertz gets cut off in the SoundCloud rendering. Uh, finally, I wanted to say like, I'm not sure if SoundCloud's compression algorithm is just exactly what iTunes does when you put a file in there and you say convert to 128 kilobits per second mp3. It's very possible someone should try it. If so, there's no point in uploading and downloading from SoundCloud because you can just simulate that by an iTunes conversion. So that's all. Bye.